a seismic shift in consciousness is taking place. The environment dominates headlines. Latest climate change studies paint a very grim picture with temperatures forecast... And if you believe the experts, it's going to be worse down under than anywhere else on the planet. Climate change is a major political issue. Well, the Howard government hasn't set a target here. They've stolen it from the states. It's the largest evaluation ever of climate change and the findings are frightening. Climate change isn't something about the future, it's here and present now. Uh, we absolutely see around us changes in temperature, temperature maxima, um, rates of warming in daily temperature minima, uh, and increasingly rainfall anomalies that we can only explain by using global warming and uh, human-induced changes in the climate system as the cause of those changes. It's not necessarily accepted from people without scientific credibility in the area, but it's absolutely uh, accepted at a level of, of unprecedented agreement in the scientific community. How to solve such problems is one of the primary goals of the University of New South Wales. Yeah. Well, I think the universities have a critical role not just in the climate change debate, but in coming up with practical and workable understandings and then over time either solutions or adaptations. For this reason, UNSW has formed a $6 million climate change research centre to help guide policy for the future. We're building up this centre to lead Australia's climate change science efforts, particularly with a focus on the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, most of the climate research done on this planet is actually done in the Northern Hemisphere, so there's a big gap of, of knowledge about how the Southern Hemisphere climate system works and how climate change will impact on Australia in particular. The scale of critical mass that we're bringing to bear at UNSW that I think will begin to make a real difference where you've got 30 or 40 or 50 people working across the climate change problem and we're the university with the largest team being built in Australia and I hope that means we're going to make a really uh, sustained uh, challenge on the climate problem in the future. Future solutions will be able to draw on the university's unparalleled achievements in such areas as photovoltaics. Researchers are also working on ways to solve Australia's crippling water crisis. It covers the gamut, from membrane technology to the complex interplay between soil, groundwater and bushfires. Our research activities hold several world records for efficiency. So at the moment we've got research activities in what we call three generations of solar cells. The, these ones here are a first generation made of wafers. Uh, even though they're a fairly mature product, we still have advances that we're developing at the moment and we're working closely with companies in Asia and elsewhere in collaborative research uh, to put them, the, our innovations almost straight into production lines. Beyond research, there are other ways universities can influence people to act on climate change. I think we have a perfect laboratory here. If you look at our campus here, we have probably 40,000 students, 5,000 staff. Uh, that's bigger than most suburbs. The way we manage the suburb is critical. UNSW can track in real time the energy use on campus any minute of any day. You can't manage it unless you can measure it. So you need to be able to see what's happening and seeing what's happening over the last 24 hours. You might see something that is unusual. So why is the energy being used at that time of the morning? Of course, it's only appropriate that the university also uses its world-famous solar technology. This is an information point, a touchscreen, that shows us what's being produced on the, on the solar panels on the roof of the quad, quadrangle building. We can go and have a look at how the system works by touching the screen, the system itself, and getting an explanation the university of New South Wales has on the screen in front of us. And it gives a full description of how the system works. Environmental initiatives like this are showcased on the Green Trail. There was food in Australia before uh, the European settlers came along because the Aboriginal people were looking after themselves very nicely, thank you. Look how the, the, the features on the plant that you can see relate to the identifying features in the illustrations. It'll help you to identify these plants at a later date. 
Okay, uh, we are standing on the entry point for the university's stormwater collection system. We're collecting stormwater from about 70% of the campus. This is one of the, the lowest points on campus. And the water from here goes through a gross pollutant trap and gets filtered to remove any litter or other material. Then that cleaned water goes into this percolation pit, which goes from just past that fence line, stretches in about 10 metres, in a big semicircle right around half the oval, and infiltrates back into the aquifer, the Botany Sands aquifer from there. The intent is there to, to really use the aquifer as a, as a giant rainwater tank. Across campus there are, there's no single faculty that doesn't have an interest in climate change research. We're seeing climate changes in this part of the world that aren't explained yet. And we're seeing some evidence around us now amplifying that natural drought process to, to lead to some extremes that we haven't seen on the, on the Australian continent before. We are living in an era of consequences, times which demand the creative solutions which universities can provide. What can we do, what do we do in our own little communities to be in effect exemplary in terms of not contributing to climate problems but hopefully to setting up a world in which the climate is the climate, not the man-made climate.